And what's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. I'm Zach Davis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Today I want to do a quick video on the seven I am statements of Christ Jesus. Now, I am is not unfamiliar to us. This is a declaration of deity, a declaration that Jesus is God. I know that's disputed to some, but it's undisputed to me. I think it's necessary for our salvation, the deity of Christ. I want to talk a little bit about these I am statements in relation to uh, their nature. And what I mean by that is, we, do we see a physical, literal fulfillment in these I am statements? Now, you might remember that Moses, when he had the interaction at the burning bush, that he was told to go back to the people. And he said, when I go, who do I tell them? Sent me, I am who I am. And this is obviously Yahweh speaking. And Jesus picks up the I am statements, which is a declaration again of his deity. But let's look at the first one. The first one is, I am, and all of these are found, by the way, in the book of John that I'll be looking at. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And in the context of him saying, I am the bread of life, this gives us an echo back to the first Exodus, where manna rained down from heaven, a supernatural, spiritual bread. Uh, now let's ask the question, was Jesus physical bread that was physically eaten? And the answer to that is no. Jesus was partaken of through faith. And in the context of John chapter 6, um, Jesus is saying that He is God come down from heaven, the one who is the sustainer. And bread's not unfamiliar to us. We see it at the Last Supper. We see it in all of the communion elements and communion passages all throughout the scriptures. Uh, Christ gives us strength. He says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So number one, take a note. It's not a physical bread that Jesus is, which leads us to number two. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John chapter 8, John chapter 9. You can check those out. Was Jesus a physical light? Uh, the answer to that is no, but he did shine uh, the way. You think about Jesus being the word, and Psalms tells us that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So Jesus being the word is the light. Uh, you can see some of those things that are proven out in the miracles that he did by giving the blind sight. But again, we ask the question, did Jesus literally, physically shine a light? No. Uh, the light just sets out to echo uh, really Genesis chapter 1 and Jesus playing off that, I believe. So he is the light. Number three, I am the door. Was Jesus a physical door? John chapter 10 and John chapter 9. No, but Jesus is necessary for entrance into the kingdom of God. So when we think about Jesus being the door, he's not on a hinge that opens and shuts, but Jesus is the one by which we must pass through to have eternal life, to be reconciled to God. Again, think about the nature of all of these I am statements. The next one that we see, I am the good shepherd. Uh, was Jesus actually a shepherd that uh, went around herding goats and, and sheep? And the answer to that is no. But he does claim in John chapter 10 to be the good shepherd. This is a declaration, I think, that echoes Psalm 23 uh, when he says, The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, this lets us know Jesus is the Lord. Uh, so the Lord is my shepherd, but he would shepherd his sheep and his people. And that's the way in which it is used. It's a physical expression uh, given to help us see a spiritual understanding. And that's the whole point that I really want to make in this video, that Jesus isn't a shepherd of, like David was, over a flock of sheep, but over people. Jesus said that he was a different kind of shepherd than those who were currently over them. Jesus was the shepherd that would lay down his life for the sheep. And really, my thought in making this video is the next one, and where, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Because when we read that, a lot of times we've, we've grown up thinking, okay, I am the resurrection and the life. We immediately think about a physical body coming out of the ground. And if you're familiar with this channel, then uh, you, you understand the way we think about resurrection and nature of the dead. Jesus physically rose out of the grave. 100% believe that, would never deny that in my life. Over 500 have testified to that. The question becomes is, when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, in John chapter 11, is, is he necessitating, when he says resurrection, that a physical body must come out of the ground? And I don't believe so. I think that Peter's quotation of the Psalms in Acts 2 gives us a, a clear 
declaration that the Messiah's flesh would not see corruption, and it did not, and I don't think that's a promise for us. But here's the way I view Christ in the resurrection. Think about the way that Paul viewed it. In Ephesians chapter 2, he said that you were dead and you came to life. Well, was he writing to the church at Ephesus who was physically dead? No, they were spiritually dead. And when they received resurrection was when they were born again and came back into the presence of God. That's the way that I view Jesus speaking of resurrection here in John chapter 11. Now, why would one of these I am statements be an actual physical fulfillment when all the other six are clearly, uh, whether you want to call it metaphor or however you want to speak of it in that way, speaking of something that represents a spiritual reality. The next one would be where Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and that's John 14, 6. Uh, this is a powerful statement. Jesus is coming and clearly presenting himself. Um, was he a road? Was he a, a way that was physically walked on? No, but he was the truth. Uh, he was the life. And I think all of this follows and flows in the same thought. And the final one that we'll take note up here today is, I am the true vine. Was Jesus literally, physically a green vineyard? The answer to that again is no. This is in comparison to Old Covenant Israel. Go check out, um, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 5 or Isaiah 6. Go check out those passages, how the vineyard of the Lord of hosts was Israel. And Israel was a vineyard that didn't produce fruit. So if you think about the parable of the wicked vine dresser, where God said that he would come to his vineyard and that he would uh, more or less demolish it, he would wipe it away. Now Christ is saying that he is the true vine. He's the one that we should be connected to. The scripture echoes this all over the place. One place that bears this out is Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, stands in the way of sinners, sits in the seat of scoffers, his delights in the law of the Lord. On his law he meditates day and night. Watch this. He's like a tree that's planted by rivers of water that yields its fruit in its season. Jesus said in John 15, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. This is a connection, meaning that they're going to disconnect from the current city, the old covenant Jerusalem, whether Jew or Gentile, and they're going to believe in Christ Jesus, connect to the true vine. This is why Revelation 22 gives us a picture of the garden city. The garden city, read Revelation 22, which echoes Psalm chapter 1, uh, which speaks of the trees which are near the river of living water and they bear fruit each month for the healing of the nations. If you're wondering what the river is, go check out John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, where Jesus connects the living water to the Holy Spirit. And you get a Trinitarian passage in Revelation 22. So, for people to force resurrection to have to mean something physical is a complete contradiction of the rest of the I am statements that are found in the book of John. I hope that's helpful to you. Like, comment, tell me where I missed it down below. Uh, help me out. Great to see you today. God bless you and we'll see you soon.